Hey guys, welcome to the Sunday vlog. Maybe I'll publish it tonight, I don't know. I'm recording this on Sunday afternoon. I just got back from a long walk. So this is a pure vlogging type of video where I will answer one question. Maybe in other vlogs I'll answer multiple questions. I'll eat something that's uh, supposed to be nutritious. I really doubt that it is, but it's supposed to be. Anyhow... And uh, yeah, so the question somebody asked me if I wanted to do back-end web app development, should I start with Java? Uh, it depends how nerdy you are. If you are very comfortable with writing code, you're very comfortable as a developer, and, and you haven't done webs, web app before, web apps before, then yeah, Java could be a good choice. So you got to consider more than just the technical aspects of a language or framework you have to look at the market you know it doesn't matter if you think language a b c or d or framework a b c whatever you it doesn't matter if you think if it's the best if there's no jobs in it in where you happen to live or pays much much less then uh, you know what's the point at the end of the day you have to always judge your technology stacks based on both technical implications of the choice and the market implications simply in terms of market implications is is uh, are there jobs there is there a long road ahead for that particular technology stack so with java um, there's plenty of jobs in java but they tend to be in larger the in larger enterprises in larger businesses they call this the enterprise whether it be uh, private businesses or whatever big organizations they'll use java or they'll use uh, microsoft.net typically maybe a little bit of javascript here and there but the reason why i mention this is because if you're looking to go freelance you're looking to do a startup you're looking to set up small business sites or web apps then java would not be my first second my first second or third choice my first second or third choice would be php for small business uh, maybe then my second choice or it could be my first choice would be javascript and node then i would look at python django maybe ruby rails I had to throw in a Ruby joke, but um, you have to compare more than just the, the technical. That's why more and more, in more and more of my videos, I'm trying to talk more about the business implications of things to help people understand that. Nerds who, um, you know, they're, they're just trying to get their heads wrapped around the technology. The technology stacks are complex enough now to, to throw in this into the mix, to throw into the mix the idea that you got to consider the business implications that becomes a difficult, uh, more of a challenge, I suppose. And that's what I address on this channel. Again, if you're new to my channel, this is based on over 20 years' experience. Uh, yeah, so Java, yeah, I love Java. Java has a special place in my heart, but and it's a very solid, refined language, but it's slow to write in because Java code is very uh, verbose. Uh, the, the setup is for lack of better terms, is verbose. It's, there's a complexity to it. Whereas with PHP, to get up and running with a simple web app, it's like it's, it's trivial, boom. Uh, and Ruby Rails is much easier to get set up than Java. Uh, 
Python and Django, Python Flask especially, much simpler. Node.js, much simpler. In terms of performance between the different technologies, Java, Python, Ruby, PHP, C Sharp, et cetera, et cetera, they're all neck and neck. They're all really good. All have their pros and their cons. And it really depends what's going on in terms of the technical implications. Really, the technology has really flattened out in terms of the development cycle. What do I mean by that? Back in the 90s, up through, I'd say, about 2012, every year, every two years, you would see a massive change or a huge change in the way we would build stuff on the web because the web was a very immature technology, especially when it just started, what I just started back in 94. And every couple of years, things would come out new. But that's a generalization. But over time, things, uh, the development cycle slowed down, meaning the amount of change in the technology that we use today has slowed down as it's become more mature, as it is with any other industry. So what do I mean by that? Back in the early 90s, almost like every six months, it seems, every six months, certainly every year, there would be big changes, additions and changes to uh, the whole web thing in terms of new technologies, new methodologies, new best practices. That's normal for any young, young, young industry. But over time, it became, instead of not every six months, it was every year, it was every two years, every three years, every four years, in terms of when things would change. The last big change in the tech stack, uh, excuse me, in the web stack, was I would argue at around two, 2012 when HTML5 basically took over from XHTML. Thank the nerd gods. XHTML was a kludge from the beginning. I argue that. Mm. But... That's the front end. Ajax, widely adopted. Ajax makes Vue, JS, possible, React, all this stuff. Got chocolate. Chocolate over my hands. So both on the front end, web browser coding, and on server side coding, things are pretty stable. Things have been stable for years. And that's why I tell people, you can look at courses that are two, three years old now. If they were designed properly, you'd be fine. The last change I say, maybe on client side technology, besides 212, you have XHTML. I think it's the the slow, um, the fade out of jQuery, perhaps. jQuery is still used because it's used in the sort of in the nuts and bolts, the back of like things like Bootstrap. But even Bootstrap. I think it's still super widely used because it just works. Bootstrap 3 is what I still use today. You know Bootstrap 4 is out. If you don't know, Bootstrap is a web framework that is designed to make it easy to lay out websites because prior, uh, with older versions of uh, web browsers, it was a real pain to get certain types of layouts with uh, CSS-based layouts. Anyway, it's another story. Don't worry about the ancient history. It's not important. Yeah, so... Um, why am I talking about this? What was my whole point? Yeah, what I do, Java, if you're comfortable as a programmer and developer and you happen to be working in the enterprise or that's what your interest lies, you want to go work for a big bank or a big telecom, then Java might be your best choice. But it might be C-sharp.net in terms of web apps. But if, on the other hand, you're looking to be freelance, you're looking maybe to do a startup or you want to work for small companies, I wouldn't do Java. Not because Java is a bad language, just that's not where it's sort. That's not where it excels. That's not where it does great. It's like you know, like I have an I have an Audi. I have an Audi S5, and it's a sports car. And I'm just about to pay a crap ton of money to get new shocks put in place because our roads are so terrible in Montreal. Our roads are so terrible that the shocks have been destroyed. And uh, in Montreal, really, I should have an SUV. Uh, the problem is with the sports cars, you got the low-profile tires, so the shocks take a lot of the impact of uh, of the bad roads. So you got to choose the right vehicle for the right road, um, or you got to be, ex or you got to, you got to be expecting, you got to expect to pay the price for that luxury, right? To have that sports car where you have smooth roads, where you can, where you get that handling and that feeling. Uh, so yeah, Java. Great language, slow to write in, 
if you're going to do enterprise work, that's a great choice. Although in your area, which you should check, it might be .NET. It might be not .NET C Sharp. That being said, if you do one or the other, it's no big deal if you have to switch because C Sharp is basically a Java++. When Java was huge, Microsoft said, we got to come up with something like Java, a language like Java, but let's fix things we don't like about Java. And they came up with C Sharp. And since then, Java and the C Sharp, you know, they, it's been leapfrogging each other. And of course, people who do C Sharp will say C Sharp is better. And people who do Java will say Java is better. Blah, blah, blah. Usual language wars. It's like Mac versus Windows, Android versus iOS, uh, you know, BMW, Audi. It, it's, it's a lot of his personal choice. They're all good. And I'll close off. Um, I accidentally released another version of a video uh, on YouTube. So you see that I have different edits of videos. I do that not often, but often enough where I'll have different edits. And what I like to do is I'll record a video and then I will uh, sit on it. Sometimes if I'm smart, I'll sit on it for a few hours, not a day or so, and then look at it with fresh eyes to see whether or not uh, it plays well. So I'll have different edits. And sometimes, depending on your mood, one edit will look better or feel better than another edit. So I accidentally, I thought I, I, I had scheduled a, a second edit of uh, a video I just put out. And uh, I, I had not intended to put it out. So anyway, people saw, a few people, a few hundred people saw the second edit. No big deal. Just had a little bit of extra in there. And that's it. That's, the, uh, that's what it is when you're creating the YouTube videos. Any video work. If I just increase the production value just a little, some overlays or some music or some special effects or something, or I'm doing uh, some detailed work, at the, it increases the amount of time it takes to prepare a video tremendously. Uh, I know some of these vloggers who they do all these elaborate shots and so forth uh, because their, their content is really dependent on elaborate shots rather than information. So thank God I'm information and centered, but they'll spend eight, 10 hours to edit a 10 minute video. Um, I've done that. I've done like I did this uh, language race video of many months back. You, and uh, it took like hours. It's like a 10 minute video, if, if that much, I forget now. It took many hours to produce it. And it was just a lot of work to do all that animation and so forth. And people liked it and people appreciated it, but not any more than, you know, just these chats like this. So anyway, let me know in the comments below if you like this format here, a Sunday kind of a chill vlog style. If you're watching this, uh, let me know what likes, let me know what comments, share it, you know. This tells me what you guys want in terms of this uh, YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is still as much a hobby as it is anything anything else for me. It is, I'll admit, it's, it's been turned out to be a great, a great uh, vehicle for promotion because I get the word out, people see my content, they see how I present my material. And then they, they buy my courses, and, they, and the institutions buy my courses. I, I deal with a lot of schools. And so it's been really good in terms of just pure marketing. So I can't complain about that. And I can't complain about that because I, I just enjoy doing it. I just enjoy uh, producing the material, interacting with everybody. Uh, strangely enough, I don't get hardly any trolls. I hear a lot of other people complain about the trolls. I hardly get any trolls. I get the occasional here and there, but it's very, very rare. Whatever. If they, they troll me, I just delete, you know. That's the power of uh, owning the channel, I suppose. Which I don't really own because YouTube owns the channel. Uh, don't make no mistake about it. And I'll leave with this uh, business lesson. Diversify, diversify, diversify. Even though I have over 100,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, uh, my website still get a lot more traffic than my YouTube channel. That's for sure. A lot more traffic. In the millions of page views... Uh, a month. I haven't checked in like a couple years what what it is, maybe a year, but in the millions between uh, killer sites, killer PHP, how to build websites, CSS tutorial, CG web, uh, they get a lot more views on my YouTube channel. Although the YouTube channel is not not bad, right? It's not bad. Anyway, let me know if you like this video, and if you want to learn how to code, you want to deep dive into code, you want to learn how to code much more quickly than you think than you thought would be possible, much more easily. 
check out my courses below. You get on, you will get on the Studio Web 4 platform, which was just released a couple months ago. A total re-ray from scratch. And uh, it's pretty cool. And if you want to learn code quickly and easily, the web stack, Python, JavaScript, HTML5, CSS3, SQL, databases, there's no quicker way, in my opinion. The platform, the Studio Web platform, was designed from scratch to teach code. And I think that's why it's uh, very effective, because it's the only specialized, I don't know if it's the only one, but it's one of the only specialized platforms out there, just pure for code just purely for code. Anyhow, that's it for now. Uh, I'm doing um, thumbnails. My hair's getting too long. I think I'm gonna have to give it a good, uh, a good trim soon.